Hello and welcome to my latest presentation. Uh, this video is purely for AUM users. Uh, it's a great new product that's about to come out and I think if you're a user of AUM and you record big sessions like this one, then this app is an essential buy. Uh, let's take a look at AUM MIDI Mixer. So let's start from scratch and show you how easy it is to uh, integrate MIDI Mixer into your own recordings. Um, first thing I'm going to do is launch AUM Mixer in standalone mode. And in this mode, you're going to be presented with the AUM Templates dialog. And if we click the option for AUM Templates, it will launch the Files app and uh, give you the option of two default AUM Templates. In this case, I'm going to pick the 12 channel template. And as you can see here, it's completely configured AUM for us with 12 channels. And all of these 12 channels are being sent through a group channel. Now the other great thing is if you want to integrate AUM Mixer into a, an existing product, uh, AUM Mixer is configured to use AUM's existing uh, CC numbers and note numbers for the faders, pans and so on. So it's just a question of enabling those and you, you're good to go. So this interface is actually shrinkable. Uh, if it's uh, taking up too much space, it can be as big or small as you want it to be. But uh, I'm going to zoom back to the first channel and just show you here that there's a one-to-one -one mapping with the uh, faders, the pan, and uh, we even have uh, mute uh, and solo there. So if you click a solo, you see that all the other channels are automatically muted and so on. So we've got that for all 12 strips. Okay, so here, here the fun starts. So the first thing I'm going to do is enable the fader lock button. And with this engaged, uh, when you move one uh, fader, they'll all move. Now, this is great if you have a mix. So let's just set these faders just to random values as a starting point. Um, you can actually increase or decrease the overall volume uh, without adjusting the relative volumes of each channel. Now, if we take a look at the right hand side of the mixer here, there's a column which is specifically designed for snapshots. Now, a snapshot is just the current state of the mixer, the current state of the faders and pans and everything. And we can take up to eight of these snapshots and then smoothly fade and transition between them. Now, I'm going to set the transition time to three seconds. I'm going to hit the little camera icon and I'm going to hit one of the S1 to 8 buttons. And what it will do is it will store the current settings in that particular snapshot and you'll see it's turned yellow. Now I'm going to move the slider somewhere else and snapshot a second set of uh, mixer positions. And again you'll see that turn yellow. Now if we press one of those buttons, S1 and S2, it will smoothly fade between those snapshots. Now you can use these snapshots in real time or because uh, AUM Mixer has built in automation recording you can play them back during the recording session to get your smooth transitions that saves you a lot of hard work. The other thing to note is each snapshot can have its own transition speed you just need to change the transition speed before you capture the snapshot. So let's take a look at using those snapshots during an automation recording. Now a quick way to select record on each of the channels is just to simply long press in the uh, output lane on the record icon and it will select all channels for record. And I'm going to enable the master record. You have to enable the master record for anything to get recorded. Now recording starts the moment I press the master record button. And currently the uh, settings for the mixer have been stamped at that current location. Now if we press the host transport play we can manipulate the sliders either manually or using the snapshots as I'm doing here. So let's uh, manually manipulate the fader and the pan and so on. So we have actually have something to record. Now when we press the stop button, you'll notice that anything that's been recorded, any channel that has recorded data, the play button automatically illuminates. We can turn those play buttons off if we wish. Um, but if we slide the interface down, you'll see that on channel 1 we have some fader information recorded. 
and if we play that back you can see that fader um, moving in real time with the graph so that's uh, how, how easy it is how quick it is to record automation now if I change channel and we move to say channel 2 3 4 you'll see uh, the graph for each of the sliders and we can manipulate that in real time using the tools provided so if I uh, go to back to channel 1 I'm going to delete this fader information from this channel I'm going to select the paint tool and I'm going to start the transport going because I'm going to do this in real time so you can see me manipulating the um, the fader in real time and even as it's playing I can manipulate this all right so I'm not very good with my curves um, we can also use the ruler tool to get uh, smooth uh, fades transitions and if you press and hold that ruler button, there's even an option for snap, so you can snap to beat. Uh, there's five levels of undo here, so if you do anything wrong, you can easily get back. Now, if you resize the plugin window, you can actually get both the graph and the mixer on screen at the same time. And as you can see there, I, 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 I long press the line tool to get the uh, snap to grid option on the ruler tool. And that's a, a much uh, nicer way to actually draw gradients and things. Now you can actually take uh, sections of your automation um, and copy and paste them from one area to another. You do that by drawing a selection within the ruler. And once you get a selection, you'll see the clipboard icon is lit up. So if we hit that clipboard icon, you'll see that there's various options, cut, uh, cut, copy, paste. We can just slide that selection somewhere else and pick the paste option. So it's as simple as that. Now the other important thing to know is while the selection is open uh, or on screen, uh, the drawing tools uh, will not draw outside of it, uh, including the erase tool I just used there. Um, if we check a line tool, we can demonstrate that more clearly. If I draw a line through it, you'll see what happens there. It will limit uh, drawing to that particular area. Now, to pick the various components, you just use this co component drop down list here. So we can actually view the uh, pan information that we previously recorded uh, and uh, the mutes and so on. In fact, let's go to uh, the mutes and uh, show you how easy it is to draw those in you can if you um if you paint above the center line it's on if you paint below it's off so it, it's very easy to uh to create these uh, uh mutant solo parts now one interesting addition is the user lane and the user lane transmits on uh, cc20 controller change 20 and what we can do we can range an area uh, within the uh, editable uh, graph and we can uh, paste uh, CC numbers within there and that's very useful for controlling uh, other pieces of equipment such as uh, changing pattern on digisticks or digi keys or sending uh, CC20 uh, notifications to other uh, pieces of AUV3 equipment within AUM so let's go back to basics and show you a few tips and tricks here. Uh, if we pick the menu item uh, initialize mixer, um, it will reset um, the mixer to default state, removing all automation, snapshots and such like. And what we're going to do is arm tracks one and two and just go through a basic recording. We arm the master record and we're playing back and I'm manipulating the sliders but what I'm going to do I'm going to instead of pressing the transport stop I'm going to press the master record to stop and you'll notice that immediately after I press the master record stop the um, recorded session is actually stored and becomes available in the graph view now I'm going to initialize the mixer again and go through the same scenario we'll arm the uh, the two tracks record press the master record and start the playback 
and manipulate the sliders. Now, if at some point you realize you've made a mistake and you don't want to store that information, um, you just simply press and hold the master record and recording will stop and that uh, recording session will be thrown away. Now, under normal circumstances, when you stop the host transport or press the master record, uh, recording stops and the uh, recorded session is then merged with existing automation data. Now, you can toggle this button at the top here to have it replace existing automation data for those armed tracks and for that period of time that recording took place. Now, if you look at this mixer here, you can see that S1 is lit up, which means there's a snapshot there. If we tap and hold that, we can delete that snapshot. Likewise, we can tap and hold one of these uh, play buttons and delete all automation for that channel. So it's a quick way of deleting all the automation for everything on a particular channel. Now, I haven't really mentioned the output fader, but if you take a look at AUM's uh, default stencils, all the channels are output into a master group channel. And if you uh, have a look at the uh, the output fader in MIDI Mixer, uh, it, it directly controls this output fader. So it's just like a master fader here. So you can also tap and hold on a label, uh, the 1 to 12 labels at the bottom, and uh, give those individual tracks names, which is quite useful. Uh, the other thing is that um, you can save your mix. Although everything saves as part of the session, including all your automation, it's a good idea to save mixes. Now, if we open the load mix dialog, you'll see um, there's a number of mixes in here. We can slide uh, to the left to actually do a deletion. And we can also drag and drop out of here into the files app to perform backups. Uh, so that's very useful. OK, I think I've covered just about as much as I can now. Uh, this app will be available shortly. Thank you for watching.